the difference between an inlet for a 6 inch and an 8 inch would be that there would be a larger surface area here, square notches, so we would either select to build on a 6 inch pump inlet to the 6 inch tool using the appropriate spacer for the 6 inch or if we were building the 8 inch pump we would be using the 8 inch plate along with the taller appropriate spacer for that assembly. So at this time we're building a 6 inch so then what we'll do is we'll take the appropriate spacer and fill bolt and slide through the assembly and then grab our shaft and screw into place. Cutting it down again with the Allen wrench. Make sure it's tight because there will be a lot of torque exerted on the split cone and split cone nuts. At this point we can take our prepared inlet and lower down over the shaft. Again we've ensured that the spacer is positioned such that the inlet is actually above the surface of the vise itself and will not interfere with the spacer or the assembly during the assembly process. The next thing we'll do is we will take the impeller that came along with this assembly, which was a full diameter impeller, and put down first. And because it has two trims, the moderate trim will go next, and then the most severe or the greatest trim will go off the top of this pump. And what's important to note as well on this is that this pump or this impeller actually in the standard assembly comes with the pedestal on it. If it's going to be mounted at the bottom of the pump, which is the proper location uh, for the bottom or full diameter impeller, it's necessary that you actually remove this pedestal because this pedestal is only used in combination with the top chain. Again, we're going to slide the impeller down by lifting up on the impeller and pushing down on the nut until we get it close to being down on top of the shaft. we we'll give a good squirt of soap to get rid of some of the oils on the shaft. And again, make sure that the impeller or that the cone is firmly pull through the impeller and then tighten the nut down. We take our special spanner for the nut, slide in place, and then we set our torque wrench to the proper torque. While you're tightening that assembly down, you want to make sure again that the impeller is not spinning. If the impeller does spin and you find it necessary, and only if it's spinning would you use again the counter spanner that would be inserted underneath and hold it actually holds on two of the vanes. Never use a screwdriver as it can cause the impeller to be deformed and cause vibration in the pump. Next we'll take the standard chamber and put on top of the assembly. Again the standard chamber is different than the upthrust chamber or the upper chamber in that it has a seal ring installed inside of it. It has a large bearing and if we flip this over, we look inside, we'll notice that the rubber bearing, again, is removable by pushing back on it. Um, the other type chamber that's part of this assembly, we have, again, the washer that's down inside the chamber, and this bearing is actually held in place differently, uh, and it's actually on a sleeve and require a punch to punch it out if you had to remove it. Again, we're using the standard chamber at this point. Make sure that it's seated nicely and that there was no debris on the seating areas. And now we're ready to add the next impeller. Again, we have a pump that has three different size impellers. So again, we're taking the A impeller, which has the least of the trim, and that is being added next. And when you're doing this process, also 
please make sure that you're over the top of the guide vane so that the screwdrivers are well supported and so you do not deform the impeller. But again, you shouldn't be using that much pressure. It's just to make sure that the cone is pulled up through the impeller itself. Now we're ready to add the next chamber. Very good. Now we can add the last impeller, or the impeller that has the most trim on it. And again, we're going to use the standard nut to put it in place first, and then we will add the pedestal afterward. Loosen the nut, back off the unit. Anytime that you're using a pedestal on the, or the upthrust assembly, the pedestal itself is made out of stainless steel. Unlike the split cone nuts that are made out of or have a delta seal coating. So we are going to put a lubricant on the flat surface and on the threaded area of the impeller so we do not get galling while we're installing the upthrust pedestal, and so we get true torque down on to the impeller and to the split cone. So we first we add the pedestal, and then we'll add the specialty tool. Make sure it seats in the notches. And then add your spanner and then we are ready to torque. Now we're ready to add the upthrust washer. And it has to be put on where it goes over the top of the pedestal with the recess. That will go in place, again, making sure that anytime that you have a chamber that runs against an upthrust washer or upthrust spacer. We have a chamber that has a washer down inside the chamber itself. Make sure it's firmly seated. Now we're ready to grab our discharge piece. It consists of a lower plate, which has an O-ring that is stretched in place and over in a groove. It has the check valve spring and check valve assembly, and also the check valve seat. You would place the check valve seat in place. The ring goes over the top of the seat, firmly pressed in place. And then the spring of the check valve assembly would go on top of that. And then there is the cone area that also has a bearing which runs on the shaft of the check, uh, the check valve itself. So here we're actually going to in insert the shaft over the top of the spring, all the way down through the assembly, and down over the check valve shaft. Next we're going to take the discharge piece slide down and over the assembly and it firmly presses in place. If seated properly, this will move freely up and down the check valve seat completely on the check valve seat itself. And put it in place, make sure that you're holding underneath it so that the assembly doesn't come apart while you're putting it in place. This is a particularly important when you're doing tall stage cups so that you don't damage the pump parts or injure anyone by them dropping to the ground. Once in place, you want to make sure that the notches for the straps, again, are in line with the holes in the inlet. Then we'll take our straps, which are designed to actually go up inside because of the bend. These will go up inside this notched area, and when tightened down, will hold, be held in place properly. So first, you install it in the lower area of the bolt. You bring it down and you gently bend inward and then release upward 
making sure that it catches on the lip. Now we're ready to add the washers and the nuts that are in your kit. Then again, the washer is installed with the concave going upward. Take a 22 millimeter wrench, and again, just like you, we have learned on the earlier models, we'll be tightening diagonally from one side to the other, just like you would do a tire when you're changing a tire in a car. And again, on the longer units, it's, it's important to make sure that the straps are straight up and down as possible on the assembly before you begin to tighten it. Also on the longer assemblies, you want to ensure that it does not come out of the little notch area on the discharge piece. Once you've got the strap semi-snug, we're ready to actually use our torque wrench to start setting our torque. And again, the first torque that we're going to tighten the strap down to is 80 newton meters or 59 foot-pounds. It's important that when you move the wrench, that if it bottoms out on the side or the edge of the inlet, you'll find that it'll make it, it'll act as if you've reached the torque. Make sure that you, the torque is actually achieved or reached while it is in the center and there's a gap between the wrench and the inlet piece. At this point, after you've finished torquing all the straps, you'll notice that there might be a twist to the strap material itself. And we're going to straighten that out by giving it a few quick blows and leveling or evening off the surface area of your nut and the strap. Then driving this area in smooth. Now the pump is fully assembled and you're ready to remove it from the build stand. At this point, Depending on the size, you may want to have a crane or a lifting device so as not to hurt yourself. But this unit's light enough to be able to lift off and place on the table to check our end play. As with the other pumps that we've built, once the pump has been assembled, we've had the shaft pulled to its maximum travel downward during the building process. So this is where we want to check our end play first. We want to check our lowermost end play or measurement dimension with our depth veneer. As with the other product, we're going to enter in through the coupling all the way down to the surface area of the shaft down inside the coupling surface itself. Again, we're going to be reaching across an area where it's solid so you can get a good measurement. Take it down where it's solid and make sure that it doesn't rock when you're tightening up your tool. So once tightened, you can remove the tool and check the in play. And the in play should be below 71.5, plus, it's plus minus 0.5. Now we'll simply push the shaft upward using our fingers and push the coupling to the uppermost travel. And then we'll take the in play reading again. Make sure that when you're taking this reading that you don't end up inside the hole that is in the washer for the build bolt. And again, here the reading has to be above 74 millimeters. It's also good to make sure that we rotate the shaft and using a special tool made out of a shaft of a failed motor, we've taken a coupling off of a pump as well and then just drilled it through and set it in place with a set screw. This allows you to check both the end play of the pump and also check the motor if necessary. But in this case, we're actually going to slide it inside the coupling and we're going to rotate the assembly and you don't want to hear any clicking noises from impeller vanes making contact with the chambers at this point. So we have good rotation as well. Now, just as we reviewed in all the other videos, we would take this and mount it to the pump or to the motor. But what we want to note at this point, please, is that with this inlet screen on this product, it's important that you do two things. One, you locate the notch for the lead over the area or the relief of the inlet itself. Slide the lock in place over the screen. And 
once positioned properly, you'll want to take a hammer and gently deform the areas so that the lock does not come off. Also, again, important to remember is that if you're doing or building a pump that is not going to utilize the other relief area for a motor that has six leads or a star delta motor, you'll want to put in place, once again, the uh, bracket and screw this firmly in place so that no rocks and debris can enter in this area. After mounting the screen in place, making sure that it has been properly located in the center of the relief of the inlet, at this point you want to put the cable guard on, protecting the leads of the motor when you're doing this, when the motor is attached. Now what's important to recognize is that on the lower portion of the inlet, you have a larger screw with a larger shank than you have for the screw that goes in the upper area up in the discharge piece. The smaller one goes in the upper discharge area, while the larger screw goes down in the inlet area of the cable guard. Before finish securing it in place so that you have some movement, leave the bottom ones loose and then secure the top ones in place. Have them started before you finish tightening up. And then you can finish off the lower screw 